Hey everyone, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. So today we're going to do something a little bit different. A company contacted me and they said, hey, we have this device, which is basically a Bluetooth speaker, but it has a screen and you can play games on it. And they asked if I was willing to check it out and see what I thought about it. And I thought, okay, well, it plays games and it's got a screen and it has buttons. So let's see what it's like. So uh, this is the Divoom D2 and it is a 10 watt Bluetooth speaker 5.0. Uh, with a mechanical keyboard, a 3.5 millimeter screen, which has a 16 by 16 pixel grid, and it has a micro SD card, so you can put in your own music and play it from there, uh, or else just use the Bluetooth, obviously. It has a built-in microphone, so you can leave like voice memos, things like that. And then finally, it has a 3000 milliamp hour battery, which is about eight hours is what they say. So think of it like just your typical Bluetooth speaker that also happens to be able to play games on it. We'll get into that in a bit, but first let's unbox it and see what it's like. So it came in this own like plastic bag, but it also came with a gift bag. And then also it came in this plastic shell thing too. So it's like bags upon bags upon cases, you know, it's just like they, I think they really want someone to enjoy the unwrapping experience, you know, but I just kind of found like it was just a lot of things in my way in terms of just getting to the speaker itself. But you know, if you really like that experience of unboxing something, this will probably make you happy. Yeah, so you can see it has a speaker at the top and then the subwoofer in the back here. And uh, it feels actually pretty good in the hand. It's it's solid, you know, it's probably over a pound. Um, altogether, I you know, I, I like the craftsmanship of it. Uh, it it kind of has some seamless kind of look to it. You know, definitely has an 80s retro vibe to it. The mechanical keys feel good. It has this little knob. It only goes down in one direction and it looks like it's kind of like a verification button. And you can see on the side it has a USB-C port as well as a spot for a micro SD card and then the power button. So additionally inside the container you can see it comes with an instruction manual and it's actually in like probably two dozen languages so kudos to them for thinking internationally like that I thought that was pretty cool. And then, you know, just a few stickers, you know, so if you're into pixel art and things like that, you've got some stickers you can play around with. Then a very important quality control sticker. And finally, it comes with a USB-C cable and it's braided like it actually feels pretty nice. So kudos again for having a nice cable. OK, so let's power it on, see what it's like. Okay, so you can see here it has a little boot menu here, and then the keys are backlit, so to speak. I mean, there's just a light underneath the keys, um, but it's not terrible. So you can see here it has like a clock function to it, so you could use it like on a nightstand. It has different visual things. You can push the kind of brightness button and it'll change things. You can adjust the volume here on the, the controls itself. Honestly, navigating and trying to figure out where I am in the menu using these buttons was a little counterintuitive. Like it, it took me a while to kind of figure out where I'm supposed to go in order to start up whatever thing I want to do. Okay, so this is the app that you can download from the App Store and it shows you all the different functions you can set up. And honestly, I would recommend you use the phone to actually set up everything because otherwise doing it on the buttons was a little bit hard to figure out. But you can see here under the games, they have several different types of games. Like for example, here's Tetris. Uh, honestly, you can either use the control pad that's on your phone or you can use the buttons themselves on the device. Um, I don't really like using the buttons on the device because again, they didn't really make a lot of sense to me. And you'll see here in Tetris, for example, that blue piece that's falling right now is actually the same style as the green piece, but it's a different color. And to me, that was really confusing. You know, I, I associate Tetris with one color means one different type of shape. So some of these things were a little half baked. You can see here there's the ability to roll dice or to use like a magic eight ball, things like that. But each of these games were actually not a lot of fun to play. I would say that this Breakout or Arkanoid clone was probably the closest thing I had to enjoying a game. But honestly, this is not a gaming device. I was kind of hoping that, you know, there would be community related games. Like, for example, there would be games that you could submit or other people would submit or that, you know, maybe somebody had hacked into the device and they had made some cool things with it or whatever. None of that is out there. So you're literally stuck with these eight games that come with the system itself. And 
to be honest, none of them are all that fun. So maybe don't think about this as a gaming console in any way, but more like a Bluetooth speaker that just also happened to have a nice party trick of being able to play a game or two. I mean, if you're really desperate and wanted to play a game, I guess you could on this, but it's not anything I found enjoyable. So one bright spot is the fact that they have community related like icons in different art and you can actually install those onto your device. And I thought that was really kind of neat. You can browse through, look at different uh, categories and figure that out. In addition, they have their own music section. I didn't use any of this music. I actually just went and used my own music app, you know, used it like a Bluetooth speaker and this sounds pretty good. Here it is right here. You know, I think the audio quality is pretty good. For $80, you can probably find something that sounds a lot better than this, but you're probably not going to find something that has all of these other functions as well. So if you find some of these functions interesting, this might be something to consider in the fact that it is a Bluetooth speaker that also does a lot of other things. And like I mentioned before, the build quality is really nice on this thing. It does feel really good. It has a nice heft to it. I think it would look great on your desk or maybe on your nightstand. And for example, if you didn't have a speaker hooked up for your computer, this would, might be a good solution because you can just plug it into the USB-C, leave it powered on all the time, and it would work pretty well. So let's talk about what I like about this device. I like the build quality. I think it has some pretty decent audio for the price. Uh, overall, I like the feel of it as well. The keys feel pretty good. And I like that it's customizable. You can go in and add any sort of screen or build your own. You can make your own pixel art, things like that. So I think that is a pretty neat idea and it's executed pretty well. It does look nice on a desk or in a nightstand. So if you're looking for something, it's just a nice accessory to put on your desk or nightstand. This might do the trick. It actually has an alarm system built in and everything. So you could use this like your alarm. Okay, so let's talk about what I don't really like about this device. Number one, the viewing angles on it are pretty terrible, so unless you're looking at it straight on, you're not really going to see what's on the screen. Uh, the software even in the app is a little bit buggy, so I was not able to make some of the functions work the way I wanted them to. And the menus inside, you know, using the button and trying to navigate inside, it's just trash. It's no good, you know. Unfortunately, you, you're probably going to want to use your phone to do all that navigation. And the games part of it are really not games, it's just kind of a party trick there. So overall, I would argue that this thing does everything mostly okay. It doesn't do anything great, uh, but it's still okay. And for $80, I'm not really sure if it's worth that price, you know, and I'm looking at something like the Retroid Pocket 2, which is $80, and it's like, well, you know, I would get a lot more enjoyment out of the Retroid Pocket 2 than this thing. So really, it's up to you and how you spend your own money. This might make a really great gift. All right, so that's really it for this video. I just wanted to show off this device. I thought it was a pretty neat idea. Uh, in, in reality, it's not something that I ever thought would I would use for a gaming YouTube channel. So the idea that this thing is a gaming device is just out the window. This is not really something like that unless you're really desperate to play a game. Um, overall, it's a pretty decent speaker that has some pretty interesting functions to it. Uh, would I recommend you buy it for $80? Uh, you know, if it's a gift for somebody else or you really like the look of it, I think it's worth it, you know, and the sound's not bad either. And so if you wanted to hook it up to your home computer and put it on your desk and that be your only speaker, because for example, you don't have any other speakers, I could see the use case in that scenario, but that's about it. All right. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and thanks for watching. We will see you next time. Happy gaming.